So where we're at is this. We have the geometric Lorenz attractor and for it, a one-dimensional Poincaré return map whose dynamics we can hopefully completely understand. And the way we're going to go about that understanding is through a genuinely new idea. This is the idea of symbolic dynamics. It's going to take some time to develop, but stick with me. This is incredibly powerful and central to our story. Here's the setup. We've got our Poincaré return map, p of x equals 2x mod 1 on the interval from 0 to 1. Now we could try analyzing that as it is, but here's a different way. Let's think about that interval from 0 to 1 as being comprised of decimals. Well, that's not a surprise. Of course they're decimals. But think about these decimals as an infinite sequence of digits, of symbols. So, for example, I'm just going to pick some x in that interval. Let's say its decimal expansion is 0 0.721828, maybe it's a, an eventually repeating decimal. Okay, that's cool. But then what is p of x? What happens? Well, I have to multiply by 2. So I think I can do that. Uh, the 0.7, that's like a 1.4. And then the 2, 1.44, 3, 6, maybe a 5. I don't know. E eventually, I get tired of trying to do that multiplication. But I do that, and then I have to, oh, I have to do the mod 1 part. So I've got a 1 out in front. I'm going to get rid of that guy. My final answer is going to be 0 0.4436 something, something, something. I don't know what. Now, that is not so much fun, but there's a better way. And that better way is to express everything in terms of binary decimals. So my point x, I don't know, some random point, can be expressed as a sequence of zeros and ones, something like 0 0.1101001011110, etc. Now, what does this mean? Well, this is just like decimals with base 10, but the first term is the halves term, then the quarter term, then the one eighth term, then a one sixteenth term. I can just add all of these up to get what that number x is. Now, why are we doing this? <laughs> What's the point? Oh, the point is to double a binary decimal. You do the same thing as when you multiply a base 10 decimal by 10. You shift the decimal point over by 1. So p of x in this case is going to be what? Well, I've got 1 Point one zero one zero zero one zero one 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 zero it keeps going. It keeps going to get the mod one. I'm just going to drop that first digit. What I have done is I have simply shifted the decimal point over one, and I've forgotten that first digit. Now this is all a very very simple idea, but we're going to need to do things a bit more formally. We're going to have to consider the space of all binary decimals. So all of these decimal expansions in binary, we're going to give that a name. And that name is going to be as follows. We're going to take the set 0, 1. These are our digits. And I'm going to look at sequences of zeros and ones. And the way that I'm going to express that is by like an exponent, like I'm taking a power of this set, and that power is going to be represented by n, the natural numbers. What that represents is that we have a semi-infinite sequence of digits. So a naught, a one, a two, a three, the zeroth, first, second, third digit, etc., etc. These are indexed by the natural numbers, n. That's why we're using this notation. Now, if you've seen anything in, say, language theory or automata theory in computer science, this is going to be familiar notation. If not, don't worry about it too much. Try to think of this as formal notation for semi-infinite sequences in digits 0 and 1. Okay, now that is going to be what we work with, our numbers, if you will. And what we're going to do to those numbers is we're going to shift the decimal point. We're going to do this via a shift map, sigma. 
that has domain, this space of binary decimals, and has target, this space of binary decimals. And what it does is it just shifts the decimal point over and drops the zeroth digit. It drops that a naught term, just like we saw in that previous example. Now this seems all kind of formal, and it is kind of formal, but we're gonna put it to good use. Our goal is to state the following lemma. The shift map sigma on this space of binary decimals is topologically conjugate to our Poincaré return map P. What do I mean by that? You may have to go back and review topological conjugacy a little bit from a long time ago, but here's the idea. It's really simple. We have our map P, 2x mod 1, on the interval from 0 to 1. So that one, we know. That makes sense. But we also have the space of binary decimals, and we have the shift map on that space. So up above, I've got the Poincaré map for the Lorentz, the geometric Lorentz attractor. And then down below, I have the space of symbol sequences with a shift now. Here's the idea. What I have is a way of going back and forth between the interval from 0 to 1 and the space of binary decimals. This is simply the conversion to a binary decimal, right? Every number between 0 and 1 has a binary decimal. Every symbol sequence in zeros and 1s corresponds to some binary decimal. This is, if you like, a homeomorphism. This is really giving you a nice continuous correspondence. Now, there are a few details that the mathematically sophisticated among you know that I am skipping, but work with me, people. What I mean by topological conjugacy is that the dynamics of these two maps is the same, that you can look at what happens under the Poincaré return map and convert to a symbol sequence, or you can convert to a symbol sequence first and then shift the decimal point and you get the same thing. Now, this is not a surprise. This is what we argued from the very beginning. I am merely stating it as a formal lemma because it's going to be useful to us later. Now, I get it. So what? What's the big deal? Oh, no. This is pretty important. Why, it is so much easier to work with symbol sequences and shifts than it is to work with our Poincaré return map P. Even though P is really simple, it is still so much simpler to work with symbol sequences, as we shall see.